Amen. Do you have your Bibles tonight? Okay. Well, I'm just going to read the first three verses of chapter one of Revelations as we begin this because I want us to get this into a spirit. I've asked Karen tonight to read the scriptures as we go, as we, uh, as I call on her to read them. But uh, this, I'm going to open up with this scripture tonight. And we do this every, uh, every study uh, when we're dealing with revelations. And it says, the re revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto him his servants, things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth. Everybody say readeth. Readeth. And they that hear. Everybody say hear. Hear. The words of this prophecy. Everybody say prophecy. Prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Father, we're dependent on you tonight. We've come and may our hearts be prepared to receive that which you want to deposit, that which you want to speak into our spirits and into our hearts. May we receive it. Father, may it bring a change in the way we think and the way we live and the way we act. May it clarify some things that need to be clarified in our spirits. And Father, may it answer some questions that we've had. But more than anything, may it want us and prompt us to be prepared for the time in which you return. Now, Father, move up and down these aisles as only you can by your Spirit, touching us on the only way you can. May we listen, may we hear, and may we receive. In Christ's name, and everybody said, Amen, amen and Amen. When I spoke of utopia earlier, that's exactly what God had created. When he created the earth and then gave it to Adam and Eve and said, be fruitful and multiply, everything here is yours, it belongs to you, it was a world without sin. It was a perfect utopia. They never had to worry about what they were going to eat or what they were going to wear. They never had to worry about... Uh, 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 crime. They never had to worry about theft. They never had to worry about killing. It was a perfect place, a perfect utopia, you know, and there's a longing within us for that utopia. And God has deposited in us a desire for eternity, you know, and we spoke of that earlier. He's put a desire in all of us to live forever. Because that was his plan. His plan were, was for us to live forever. But when sin entered the world, death also entered the earth. Okay, And uh, that's the reason death is so painful, because God never meant for us to die. He never meant for us to lose loved ones through death. But we experience that every day. Somebody's experiencing that every day. And so, so there was a time in which there was a utopia, but because of sin and the sin that entered the world, we find that, that utopia disappeared. And the Bible tells us that the whole creation groans for that to be restored. Okay? It, not, just, not just those believers. There's a groaning within us, but all of creation is groaning for that utopia to be restored. And all that God had given to Adam and Eve, when they sinned, it went over into the control of Satan. Okay? And so, basically, his spirit controls what's going on in this world today. That's the struggle. That's the fight. That's the battle that we have. The good against the evil. The evil against the good. And it's because he is the prince and power of the air. Okay. Now the Bible says the earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof, but Satan is the prince and power of the air. And the Bible says we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with powers and principalities. So we are wrestling with the evil forces of the enemy, Satan. Okay. And it's not the flesh and blood, even though so how many of you know Satan uses flesh and blood? Okay. Some of you may work with what you think is the devil. They're not the devil. They may be being used by the devil, but they're not the devil. You know, you need to pray for them, okay? And, uh, but 
But we need to understand that. So God has a plan, okay? God has a plan. <clears throat> but God wasn't going to let that situation stand. And in Genesis 3 and 5, this is what God tells Adam and Eve. And he says, I will put enmity between thee and between the woman and between thy seed and her seed. He's speaking to Lucifer, Satan, this is a serpent now. And it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. So what he is saying, he's given a prophetic word that I'm going to send someone that's going to take care of this situation so it can be restored. Okay, so so God was given a prophetic word and he was speaking to to Lucifer or the serpent, whatever you want to 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 imagine there. And he's speaking and saying, I'm going to send someone that's going to take care of you. Okay, and he did that through Jesus Christ. Okay, and uh, and through the cross. And so there was not a man that could pay the price for sin. Okay, so God had to reach back into heaven and get his son who was perfect, who was holy, who was without sin. No man had that because everybody is born a sinner, okay? And we do not have it in us to pay the price that only he could pay. And so he sent Jesus, his son, to die to pay a price that you and I owed, but we could not pay, okay? So he, he came to pay the price and then to restore the kingdom, okay? He came to restore the kingdom. So we're going to see that he begins, to, he's going to set up a kingdom, okay? We're going to see that tonight. I want you to put up, uh, Derek, put up the timeline. I want us to look at this briefly before we get into this. I want to show you a timeline here, okay? The timeline, I want us to look at this timeline. OT over here is the Old Testament. Then we have the cross. This is Calvary. Then we have the New Testament and the church age. That's where we are right now. We are in the church age, okay? We're still living out the, old, the New Testament, okay? We're living out Bible prophecy, okay? So, so we're living out the New Testament, okay? And then we have the rapture, okay? This is when the saints of God are raptured at that timeline. Now, as I'm explaining, explaining this, I want you to understand there, there are many things that take place between each of these timelines. Okay, we just can't discuss them all right now. But there's many things that take place between these timelines. Okay, so we have the rapture. And then sometime after the rapture, we don't know exactly how long, but there's going to be a transition that takes place and it's going to go into the tribulation period. Okay, so you got the tribulation period, and the tribulation period is seven years. Okay? So we find that at the rapture, the church is going to be raptured. Okay? Let me just explain right here. There are three thoughts concerning the rapture. And there's, there's the pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, and post-tribulation. Okay? There's... There's, there's the pre, the, the mid, and the post, okay? We, we believe as a church and as most evangelicals, we believe in the pre-trib rapture, okay? Now, the mid-trib is that you will go, the church will go through half of the tribulation or the first three and a half years, okay, and then be raptured. The post-trib believes that the church will go through all seven years, of the tribulation and rapture. We are pre-tribbers with most evangelical churches, which believe that the church will be raptured before the tribulation period. I don't know about you, but that's the one I plan to go in. You know, I, the Bible says, according to your faith, let it be, uh, be unto you. So if you have faith for the mid, uh, then you may miss the first one. <laughs> We're going to be gone, you know. But uh, so, so, so then you have the tribulation period, and then you come at the end of the tribulation period, and we're going to explain some of this here in just a minute. You have the millennial kingdom. Okay, this is a thousand year reign. I'm going to surprise you with some things I'm going to tell you during this, and this is where we're going to end up tonight. We're not even going to get over here to heaven. I know I told you last week I thought we'd get to heaven. We're not. 
Okay, I may get you to the door, but we're not going to get in. You know what I'm saying? So we got the millennial kingdom, which is a thousand years, and then we have the great white throne judgment. Okay? And uh, we may just touch on that briefly, but probably not too much, and then heaven. Okay? So where we're going to spend most of our time is right there at the millennial kingdom. Okay? Everybody say millennial kingdom. That's where we're going to spend most of our time. Okay? Now, millennial means thousand. Okay? So there's a, a thousand year period. Okay? So before we enter heaven or before we enter eternity, uh, first, uh, we will reign with Christ for a thousand years. Okay? And I'll tell you how we'll reign with Him in just a moment. Uh, <clears throat> now, in this brief overview, it will help us see clearly the events that are taking place. How many of that helps you? How many of that right there helps you kind of put things in, in a sequence or in an order? Keeps you under, understand it. So as we're going through here, kind of explain that to you, okay? Now, uh, what may surprise you is that in the Old Testament, there's more Scripture concerning the Millennial Kingdom than there is in the New Testament. And that's kind of strange, but that's, that's the, the fact. Revelations 4 and 1, you have that? Revelations 4 and 1, Karen. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat to look up on like a jasper and a sardine stone. Okay, okay. So at, at this point, right here, Revelations 4.1, when we hear, and he says, this is John, okay, John's having this vision and God speaking to him, okay? And he says, come up hither. And it was as a voice of a trumpet. This is where we believe the church is raptured at this point right here, okay? This is where the church is raptured at that point right there. The Bible tells us over in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of a command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of a trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Uh, then he who are alive and who are left uh, will be caught up together with him in the clouds. Okay? So what's going to happen is you've got to understand there's a difference between the rapture and the second coming. Okay, at the rapture, the only ones that will hear him or the only ones that will see him are the believers. Okay, so the you know, if you're not a believer, you won't even know what's taking place. Okay, nobody will see him or hear him except those that are listening for him and looking for him. Okay. But it's going to be a sound like a trumpet, like the voice of an angel, okay? So it's not going to be silent. It's just that the world is not going to be tuned in to what God is saying and what God is doing, okay? So, and it says the dead in Christ will rise first, okay? So those who have died, you have loved ones who have died in the Lord. Those who have died in the faith, they're going to rise first. How many of you know why? Because they're six feet lower than you are. And then they will come out of the ground. And when they get even with you, then we all go up together. Okay? So, so you've got to understand those which are, have died in the Lord will be caught up. You as a believer will be caught up. Now, I don't think that we can even understand uh, and we're not going to try to this evening, but think of the chaotic condition that the world is going to be in when millions disappear. I mean, just, just think of the hurricane that just hit northern Florida and going up through Georgia. 
I mean, they've got chaos now. No lights, you know, damage to some homes. And, and you know, just think worldwide, there's not enough money in FEMA. The U.S. government cannot bail out every nation and every country that goes into a chaotic condition. Because just think, there will be total chaos like we have never seen. You talk about uh, uh, thievery. You, you talk about breaking into stores and breaking into wind, uh, uh, shops. You talk about stealing. You talk about riots. You talk about that's what's going to be going on the first part of the tribulation period. Okay, so they've got to get that under control. And at, at, to get that under control, somebody has got to come to the forefront. Okay, somebody's going to have to come to the forefront. And uh, we can't touch into that tonight. I'll just mention that will be when the Antichrist will come step in. Okay, that'll be when the Antichrist steps in. And so he'll come with peace and he'll bring, you know, uh, a, a false peace and bring some order but every, every nation has to sign up for it, okay? Every nation has to sign up for it. So we got to understand where this is headed, okay? So you do not want to be here for the tribulation. That's the reason it's so important that, we have, that we're ready and stay ready every day, okay? That's the reason it's important to be faithful, you know, every day. Uh, <clears throat> So I've already talked to you about the pre-trib, the post-trib, the mid-trib. Uh, now, in Matthew 24, Karen, if you'll go there, verse 33 through 36, read that if you don't mind. Matthew chapter 24, verse... 33. 33, and it reads, So likewise, he, when he shall see all these things, no, it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Okay, so what we got to understand and what I want you to understand is we believe in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There is also a satanic tr trinity, okay? There's a satanic trinity. <clears throat> and uh, it's the beast, it's the false prophet, and uh, let me think of the other one. The dragon, I guess. I, I, I thought I had another name for it. Uh, now, uh, what we've got to understand, the tribulation, even though there's tribulation going on here on earth, the church has been raptured. Okay? How many of you plan to go in the rapture? Did you know after the rapture, I don't care what day it, what day it takes, takes place, I don't care when it takes place, this church will be full the next day? It's going to be a little late, but it's going to be full, you know, and not only this church, but every church, you know, it's going to be a little late, but they're all going to be full. Uh, now, the church is considered the bride of Christ, okay, and, uh, and Christ is the bridegroom, okay, and uh, let me let me ex explain to you uh, a little bit. There's three major parts to uh, the Hebrew or Jewish wedding uh, of that day. Uh, there was a marriage contract signed between the parents uh, of the uh, bride and the bridegroom, and the bridegroom himself would pay a dowry uh, to the bride or her parents, and this began what was called a betrothal period, okay? We would call it an engagement. Okay, and uh, so uh, and it's during this time that the bridegroom would usually go away and prepare a place for the bride. Okay, so he'd get betrothed and then he'd go go away. How many of you remember Jesus said, uh, "In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also." So Jesus, as the bridegroom, has gone away. 
We're in that period right now. We be, we're betrothed to, to Christ, who is the bridegroom, the church is, and he's gone away and is preparing a place for us. Okay? He's preparing a place for us. Now, usually, it was prepared in the Father's house. Okay? That's where he said he was going. Okay? Now, the second step is usually occurred much later when the bridegroom, accompanied by male friends, uh, went uh, uh, to the house of the bride. And it may be at night. It could be a day. If it's at night, they would go with torches and uh, have a parade through the streets. And the bride would know that he was coming but didn't know when he was coming. We know he's coming. We just don't know when he's coming. Okay? Isn't that right? So, so he would go to the, through the uh, streets with his groomsmen, and and the bride would know in advance that he was coming, and so it, then she'd make herself ready, and they would all join the parade and end up at the bridegroom's house. Okay, this is where you get the story of the ten virgins. If five were wise and five were foolish. Okay, so so we are in that period, okay, in which we're waiting on him to come. And take us to the place he's prepared for us. Okay. This is happening during that seven year tribulation period. Okay. It's happening during that seven year tribulation period. So, meaning that for, for that, the rapture's taking place. Okay. So, he's come and he's got us. And the third phase is the marriage supper of the Lamb. So, we, for seven years, as the bride and the bridegroom, we are celebrating, hallelujah, we're celebrating with the Father and with the Son because we have been united and come together, and for seven years, we're having a party in heaven, okay? Now, tribulation is taking place down here on earth, but we're celebrating, okay? How many of you like a celebration? Yeah. Amen. So we're going to celebrate. And but the world's going to go through hell, okay? I mean, it's going to be something like you you can't even imagine. I can't even explain. You wouldn't uh, you wouldn't believe what's going to happen. And we'll deal in that if I continue this series very long. We may get into uh, what that would look like uh, a little bit. <laughs> now, so we're celebrating with with the saints and with God during this seven year period while the tribulation is going on. And uh, in Revelations 19, uh, Revelations 19, 6 through 21, read that. Now listen to this very carefully. And I may interrupt you as you go. Okay. Revelations chapter 19, verse 6 reads, And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Go ahead. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. That's, okay, and that's, in, that's Jesus. Okay, we got to get that. Okay, go ahead. 
and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Okay, hold it right there. This is the saints. These are the saints that are coming back with them. Okay? So he's coming back, and he's coming back, and it's at the end of the tribulation. Okay? We're all dressed in white. We're coming back with him on white horses, you know, and we're coming back for the battle of what they call the Battle of Armageddon. Okay? The Battle of Armageddon. Okay? Okay? So, so you got to understand, <laughs> we're going to make up an army, and we're already in that army. How many of you know, realize we're already in his army? Amen. We're already in his army, but we're going to be coming back with him because he's getting ready to do something, and this is called the Battle of Armageddon. You've heard, how many of you have heard the Battle of Armageddon? We've all heard about it. This is where it falls right here, okay? And we're going to be coming back with him. Uh, you know, as saints and as an army. Go ahead and read that. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of fireness, fierceness, and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written... King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great okay, Lord. Okay, hold it right here. Okay, what has happened, what you got to understand is what has happened, all the armies of the earth have gathered there at the end of the tribulation. They don't know what's going on, but they've gathered there to fight, and they turned all their weapons against Christ. Okay? And so he's going to, they're going to just fall dead at his presence. Okay? All the armies are going to fall dead at his presence. All the weapons have been turned against him. They've been turned against the saints. They're, they're, they're aimed at the saints and at the Savior. And, but just his presence, just his name, just his word is going to kill, kill the armies. Okay? The fowls of the air have been called by this angel because of all the dead bodies that are going to be in the valley there. And they, the fowls of the air have been called to clean up the mess. Okay? They've been, they've been called to clean up the mess. Okay? How many of you seen a bird gather around roadkill? Okay, well, can you just imagine all of the, the fowls of the air that are going to have to be gathered? <clears throat> they say, the Bible says that at that battle, the blood will flow to the horse's bridles. That's, that's how much blood will flow through that valley of Megiddo. Okay, so the fowls of the air have been called at this point to clean it up. Okay, go ahead. G yeah, listen. Jesus isn't going to leave a mess without cleaning it up. Okay? Okay, go ahead. That he may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast. 
and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Okay, this is part of the this is the part of the uh, Trinity. Okay, Satan is Trinity. As you you got right there a part of the, that's two that's two thirds of the part of the Trinity right there the beast and the false prophet. Okay, go ahead and finish down to verse through twenty one. And the remnants were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Okay. Okay, let me read right here a few verses. And I saw an angel come down out of heaven, having the keys to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil. And Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit. Okay? Cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed for a season. Okay? So what you have here is basically you, you have the Trinity being cast into the bottomless pit. Okay, so Satan is cast into the bottomless pit for how long? A thousand years. How long is the is is the millennial? A thousand years. So what we have is now we're going into the millennial. Okay, for a thousand years, but there will be no Satan. Okay, there's going to be no Satan, and uh, there'll be no more fighting. There'll be no more war. Okay, let's let's go just a little further. I want to show you what we're going to be doing. Okay, go down to Matthew twenty-five if you have your Bibles. Matthew twenty-five. <laughs> Matthew chapter twenty-five. What verse, okay, Bishop? Just go there. I'm going to have you read. It. I'm going to finish in Revelation twenty. What I was started there. Okay. Okay. And, and he cast them into bottomless pit, verse 3, and shut them up and set a seal upon that, that they should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for a season. And I saw thrones, uh, and they that sat upon them, and judgments was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus uh, and for the word of God, uh, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, uh, neither... Uh, had received his mark uh, upon their foreheads. Okay, there were those that had died during the tribulation period, but had not taken the mark of the beast. Okay, that's what this is saying right here. He sees the souls of them. Okay, they were not raptured because the rapture took place before, remember? But by their faith, they had not taken the mark of the beast. And because of that, they were killed. Okay? Let me read down here just a little bit further. <laughs> but the rest of the dead, uh, let me see, uh, let me finish that, verse 4. And I saw the thrones, and they that sat upon them, judgments was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that, that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, uh, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received the mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay, so so they're going to be resurrected at that time. Okay, but the rest of the dead, those that had died during the tribulation, lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Uh, this is the first resurrection. Blessed are the holy, is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power but they shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with them a thousand years. Okay? Now, what you've got to understand is <clears throat> you as saints which have been raptured and through the millennial thousand years, depending on your level of service and serving God will depend on, on what you do in the, the millennial, but we are called kings and priests, and we're going to reign with him through the millennial. Okay? Now, you've got to understand, you were raptured, and you've got a glorified body. Okay? So the Bible says, 
we shall, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. So once we're raptured, we receive the glorified body that Jesus had. Okay? So we receive the glorified body, and we will rule and reign upon the earth for a thousand years. Okay? Now, it says he will he'll be a judge of iron and rule with a rod of iron. Okay? So, so you cannot get out of line. There'll be no crime. The Bible says that they will beat their weapons into plowshares. Okay? So there'll be no more fighting. There'll be no more war. You know, there'll be no more guns. You don't have to worry about gun laws. There'll be no more guns. There'll be no, no more killing. We're in the millennial. Okay? Christ is king, and he's reigning from Jerusalem. Okay? And we as his saints are now serving him as kings and priests for a thousand years and making sure everybody stays in line. Because you got to understand, there are going to be people now in that, that are in the millennium that live through the tribulation, that made it through the tribulation, were not killed, but lived through the tribulation, so they still have bodies. They didn't receive a glorified body. They still have natural bodies. Okay? So what does that mean? That means that they're going to be having babies. Okay? They're going to be replenishing the earth. Okay? So you're not going to have a glorified body. I mean, you're not going to have a natural body. You're going to have a glorified body. Okay? You're not going to be having babies. I'm glad somebody's happy about that. <laughs> now, what we're going to see here, First uh, uh, John uh, 3 and 2, it says, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it does not appear as yet what we shall be, but we know that when, we, when He appears, we shall be like Him because we shall see Him as He is. Okay? Okay. Uh, do you have that uh, chapter 25, verse 31 over there? I mean, Matthew, yeah. No, 25, 31. When the Son of Man come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Go ahead. And before he shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Okay. So what you're going to have, let me explain. At the end of the thousand years, there's going to be, he's going to, there's going to be a separation of the sheep nations and the goat nations, meaning those that, it's going to be hard to believe, but you're going to have to understand at the end of the millennial, the devil's going to be loose for a season. Now, it's going to be, it's hard to believe there are going to be people that turn against Christ after they've lived under his reign for a thousand years. Isn't that crazy? That shows you that environment does not change people. Society wants you to believe that environment changes people. It doesn't change people. Haven't you ever heard of people winning a lottery in five years? They're as broke as they were before they won the lottery. The angels of heaven lived with God from time of their creative, becoming a creative being, and then a third of them turned against God. Think about that. Adam and Eve lived in a perfect place, a perfect garden, and they still couldn't keep the house together. So, so we got to understand environment does not change people. Our change can't be controlled by the outside. It's controlled by who we are on the inside. You know, we can look Christian, but not be Christian. 
We can look the part, sound the part, but still not be Christian. Isn't that right? I mean, we can come to church, you know. If I go out and sit in my garage, I don't care how long I sit there, I'm not going to become a car. <laughs> I don't care how much I confess it. I don't care how much I believe it. I don't care if I got the prayer team praying for it. I'm still not going to become a car. So we got to understand, okay? So so now we, we're going through this, this millennial, and everything is perfect. There's been no crime. There's, there's been no evil. I mean, but hearts of men have not changed. How many of you know you can live under rule, but still not be changed? You know, you can live under rule. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, people can go to prison and live under rule and live under control. But they, they, they didn't change. They're still inside. If you let them out, they're still going to commit the crime that they committed to get in there. They didn't change. So, so we're going through the millennial. And there, people are, babies are being birthed and life is being given. And, and, uh, but there's peace. Okay? There's peace. And we're going to see that. I, I've got a few minutes. Let's get into this a little bit. Remember the Lord Jesus said, pray this prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. So during the millennial, the earth begins to reflect heaven. The saints rule. Revelations 5 and 10, and he hath made us unto him God, unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. And that's Revelations 5 and 10. Okay. In Isaiah 65, go there, verse 17. This is going to give you a little glimpse into the, the millennial. Isaiah 65, verse 17. Isaiah 65, verse 17. And it reads, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Keep reading. Down to verse 25. Okay. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more trench in trench an infant of days nor an old man that hath not filled his days. Okay, hold that right there. Go back to where we're talking about infant. Read that right there. There shall be no more trans an infant of days. Okay, go ahead. Nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years okay, old. Okay, now we're talking about the millennial. Okay, it's a thousand year reign. Mm -hmm. A child has been born. If he dies at 100, he's still young. Wow. Okay? He's still young. My God. Okay. So, so, so because there is no sin and Christ is reigning, people begin to live longer once again. Yeah. Okay? They begin to live longer once again. Okay, go ahead. Are you down to... But the but the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat fruit of them. They shall not build another and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. And dust shall be the serpent's meat. Okay. What you got is said the lion will eat straw. Okay. So they will no longer be 
carnivorous. Wow. Okay, they will no longer be meat eaters because to become a meat eater, you got to kill. Mm. So there's no more death. My, my. Okay, so, so uh, you know, you could have a big lion as a pet. Oh, my. Mm -mm. You know, so, so, so what you see is you see, see Christ reestablishing what uh, uh, the Garden of Eden was like before it fell. Okay, you see that? You know what we're reading there? You see that, that he's reestablishing, you know, he's reestablishing what it was before he fell. What, what verse are you on? Karen. 25 finishes saying, they okay. shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, said the Lord. Okay. And Amos 9, let me read this. Verse 11, and the day, and on that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. This is the tabernacle of praise. You got to understand that and rep repair its damages. I will raise up the ruins and rebuild it as the days of old and they, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. And all the Gentiles who are called by my name uh, say, The Lord who does this thing. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the, uh, and the, uh, the treader of grapes, him who sow seed, and the mountains shall drip with uh, sweet wine, and all the hills shall flow with it. See, what, see what's happening here? It, it's going to grow so fast that you'll, so one will be reaping as one is sowing. You know, so so the the earth will begin to replenish the way that God intended it to replenish. It's not going to take months for it to replenish. It's going to begin to replenish exponentially. You know, as you're sowing, reapers coming behind you so quick. Okay, so so this is the millennial. Okay, this you think this is heaven? This this doesn't compare to heaven, okay? This is just a foretaste of heaven, okay? Because you got to understand, in the millennial, <clears throat> every, it, there are still humans in, in the millennial, and there's still death. They're dying of old age. They're not dying, you know, because somebody sh shot them or somebody killed them. They're dying more of natural causes than anything, okay? So this is where we are at that point. Let me, let me finish this. And I will bring back the captives of my people Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink wine from them, and they shall also make gardens and eat fruit of them. And I will plant them in their land, and no longer shall they be pulled up. Israel's not going to be pulled up out of her nation anymore. For the land I have given them, says the Lord God. Okay? And Isaiah 2 and 4, And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, and nations shall, shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Think about that. This is a utopia, okay? And it's being restored back into the condition that... that uh, uh, the Garden of Eden was before the fall. Okay? It's being restored. Okay? Isn't that exciting? So, so that's where we are. Okay? And you've got to understand at the end of that, there's a, there's a great, white judge, great white throne judgment. Now, <clears throat> can, I, can I go just a couple of more verses? Are you all okay with that? Has anybody got to go real quick? Okay. <clears throat> and in and, and Revelation 20, verse 7, it says, and, and Lucifer or Satan will be loosed for a season. Okay? Uh, and he's loosed for a season uh, so he can tempt those that have not been tempted. Okay? So he's going to tempt those that have not been, that were born during the tribulation period, been born during the millennial okay, but have not been tempted, okay? So he's going to tempt them, and there's going to be many, many which turn against, against Christ, okay? There's going to be nations, you know. You're going to have nations. 
you know, uh, that will turn against God. Okay, I mean, there's nations against Christ right now, whole nations against Christ. That, that, that will not change, even though some of them will go into the millennial. That what's in their heart's in their heart. And that's what they that's who they are and what they are. Okay. I'm gonna I've got uh, just a couple more verses. I'm gonna I'm gonna read them and I'm gonna close. In Revelation 20 and verse 7. Let me read those. <clears throat> and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed for a season from his prison. And he shall go out and deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog. Gather them together to battle, the number of whom is at the sands of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it <clears throat> from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. This dead, small and great, got to understand, those right there have never been resurrected, never been judged, and they, they were those that had lived on the earth, like when you and I lived on the earth before we lived on the earth that never received Christ and some that had died during the tribulation period. Okay? So now they're getting ready, they're getting ready to be judged. Okay? Got to understand, you have already been judged. You're not going to be judged at the great white throne judgment. That's for the, that's for the sinner. You were judged at the cross. Okay? Jesus bore your judgment on the cross. He bore your judgment. What you deserved, He bore on the cross. You know? So you're not going to be judged at the great white throne judgment. It's going to be those that rejected Christ, those that, that did not have time for Christ, those that put other things before Christ, those that didn't believe in Christ, uh, those that lived the life they wanted to live. This is the great white throne judgment. That's who that's for. You've already been judged. You've already come back as His bride. How can you be judged? You've already come back as his bride, and you've already got glorified bodies. Right? So you can't be judged because you have already been judged. When you exercise your faith and you put your faith in Jesus Christ, right then uh, he judged you and he said, There's no fault. I find no fault in them. Why? Because he's not looking at you. He's looking at the Christ in you, uh, and he has covered you in the blood, and there's nothing to judge you for because Jesus bore it all on the cross. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Now, that's where we're at. So, what do y'all think? Y'all think, you think we want to try to get to heaven one more Wednesday night? Yeah. Are y'all learning anything? Did y'all learn anything tonight? Let's all stand. <clears throat> okay, we're going to give us one more shot. Okay. And when I said it last week, I really thought we'd be there. But when I get to studying this, I get to realizing, you know, there's some stuff there that I didn't realize, you know. So how many of you heard some stuff tonight you didn't know? Had never heard before. Amen. Yeah. So, so we'll see what heaven's going to be like when we get there, okay? <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> a thousand years with the Lord is going to be a lot better than what we have right now. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a lot better than what we have right now. You know. So aren't you glad the Lord loves us enough to give us a way of escape and paid the price for us? Aren't you? Aren't you glad for that? Amen. Slip your hands up. Why don't you just tell him you love him tonight? Just in your own words. No, listen, nobody can take your place. He knows your voice. <laughs> he knows your heart's cry. He knows everything about you. He still loves you. Think about it. Father, we love you tonight. We're so grateful, Lord, that you love us. That you made a way where there was no way and you paid a price we couldn't pay. We thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus. That we don't fear death. We don't fear tomorrow because we know who holds tomorrow. 
Father, we just thank you for your love and your protection over each and every one of us. Lord, draw us near you. May we hunger and thirst after you. Maybe more tomorrow than we did today. May we long for your presence, long to be in your presence, long to be with the saints of God in the house of God. May we realize how important our witness is in this world. And may we not stand before you and be rejected by you. May you not say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. But Lord, may we hear those words. Welcome into the joys of the Lord. Father, cover us, keep us, our homes, our families. Bring us back safely on Sunday. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen and amen. Put your hands together. Give me praise. Hallelujah. Tell somebody. Son, tell them. Invite them. We're going to heaven next week. Lord willing. Lord willing. Amen. Lord willing. Amen. Amen. I want you to shout kings and priests. Okay? That's your next position. Kings and pe- pre- kings and priests. Okay? I want you to shout that on the count of three. One, two, three. Kings and priests, God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you on Sunday.